What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Barbecue Tips Podcast. I'm Christy Vanover, champion pit master, the girl behind one of America's top barbecue websites, girlscangirl.com, and a contestant on Food Network's Barbecue Brawl. I'm here to bring you quick barbecue tips to help you up your barbecue game. So this week, I got to go to the National Hardware Show, which was held in Las Vegas, Nevada. Unlike some of the other trade shows that I've been to recently, this one is dedicated to all things hardware, outdoor, and barbecue and smoking. So I'm going to touch on a few of the barbecues and grills and other outdoor cooking appliances that I saw this week. As a quick reminder, I wanted to let you know that not only can you listen to this podcast, but you can watch it also on YouTube or Embers TV. Be sure to go over there if you want to see some of the visuals of the grills that I'm going to talk about today. The first grill that I want to touch on is the Flomcroft. Now, if you listen to my episode about the kitchen and bath show, you know that I've already talked about the Flomcroft and I've talked about the German engineering and how unique it is because the burners are actually inside the grill on the bottom, but to the sides, which leaves the underside of your grill grates completely open. So you always have indirect heat cooking, but it also gets hot enough that you get nice sears on things. Well, the reason I wanted to bring it back up is because they were back at the show, but this time they were showing off their pizza stone. So it's a pizza stone that actually sits where the grill grates lie. And it's always got the indirect cooking because of the way the burners are set up. But what makes this pizza stone different from the dozens of other pizza ovens that were probably on display at the National Hardware Show is the surface itself. A lot of pizza stones are made of corderite, And so is this one, but what makes it different is that it's glazed. So it has a surface over it that actually protects the stone. The reason that's important is because if you just had bare corderite, what's gonna happen if you add something fatty on it like a burger is the grease is actually gonna soak into the stone and it's just gonna tarnish the flavor of your stone, which is gonna affect future cooks. But by having a glazed surface, it doesn't actually penetrate the stone itself, but you get that same conductivity of heat that you get with a stone, with the nice cleaning surface. So you can sear steaks on this, you can sear burgers on it. So it really makes it like a griddle, but it also conducts heat like a pizza stone. I was a little skeptical. I saw the chef put the pizza right there on that glazed stone. And I was really curious how the crust was gonna be because that's what a pizza is all about. Well, when he pulled it off and he sliced through it, I could hear the crunch as he was slicing. First thing I did was lift up a piece and look underneath. It was perfectly crispy brown, no burn marks, no charring, and everything bubbled up beautifully. The crust was still tender inside, but it was nice and crispy on the outside. So it definitely performed really well. They have the stone in varying sizes depending on which model of their grill that you buy. And you can now pick up a Flamcraft grill at barbecueguides.com. Sticking with grills, I'm gonna move on to the new Kenmore Retro Portable Gas Grill. Now I've had several portable gas grills and they all work okay, but this one is really unique. First on the outside, it's really cute, it's retro. It comes in seven different colors and styles, either with the chrome knobs and handles or a beautiful copper color knob and handle. They have a black and copper mix that's gonna be exclusive to Lowe's and then they have some other colors. But obviously what's more important than the exterior is what's on the inside when it comes to a grill. What makes this unique compared to other portable gas grills that I've cooked on is it actually has two burners. So they both have 7,000 BTUs for a combined total of 14,000 BTUs. And you get 343 square inches of cooking space because not only do you have the two grill grates, but you also have a warming rack, which I don't ever see in portable gas grills. So why is all of that important? Well, it's so much easier if you have the ability to cook with direct heat and indirect heat. When you have a one burner portable gas grill, really you just have one level of heat, especially if you don't have a warming rack. And the problem with some of those grills is that they burn extra hot and it's really hard to get them down to a low temperature. So it's hard to get even cooking sometimes on portable gas grills. Well, with the Kenmore, you can now turn one burner on and leave one burner off. So that gives you that indirect cooking zone. Plus you have the warming rack, so you can also raise things up there. It is portable. So the legs fold down and then you can clamp the lid to the base so that it stays tight. And then for the hose, there's a little hook that'll connect to the handle so you can just carry it around wherever you want to take it. As far as dimensions, it's about 15 inches tall when the legs are extended and it is 22 and a half inches wide and about 18 and a half inches deep. Some other features that I liked about the Kenmore is it's made of cast aluminum, so it feels really sturdy. It has a temperature gauge on top so you can monitor your grill temperatures. Plus it has a grease tray in the bottom that pulls out for easy cleaning. The Kenmore is gonna be available soon and it's 199 retail. Let's move on to cookers that are not in the traditional outdoor cooking space. So Cuisinart Outdoors unveiled their new outdoor wok. 
That's something that I never imagined would be in an outdoor space. Let me talk to you a little bit about the design. So first of all, the wok sits on a stainless steel cart. The cart has a ton of storage. There's bottom storage. There's tons of prep area to the side of the wok area. There are hooks to hang your tools. There's a paper towel holder and it has wheels so you can wheel it around your backyard or you can take it to a tailgate or to a catering event. The way the whole wok system works is that there's a 50,000 BTU burner and then there's a 14 inch cart carbon steel hammered wok that sits on top. It's all powered by propane, so there's a spot where you can connect your propane and let that sit on the cart itself. Then you just crank it up, control your heat levels, and you can get cooking with a wok. I'll be honest, when I first saw this, I thought, is a wok something that I would go out and buy? Is this something that I would really want to use in my backyard? But then Chris Joe from CJ Eats was using it for the National Hardware Show Celebrity Cook-Off Competition, and he showed me all the amazing things that you can actually do with it. So he started by just sitting simmering some liquid to make a pickling brine for some pickles. Then he used it to fry chicken and to fry shrimp. And then he used the dry wok to toast up some buns for his sliders and also to toast up some tortillas for his tacos. So it's really versatile. You can also obviously boil water, steam things, Anything that you can do with a pot, you can do with this wok, but because it has the wok shape, it also has the advantages of doing things like stir fry. I do like frying things in small batches, so it actually does make sense to have a wok outdoors, especially because when I fry things inside, my house tends to smell, especially if it's fish, and the grease will splatter either on my counters or on my stove. So having a wok outside where I can do small batch frying is actually something I think I might be interested in. So this is gonna come out in May, and I'll have to check it out. If you like to do big batch frying though, you might wanna check out Max Fryers. So they just came out with these new portable fryers and they're pretty big. There's a four gallon and a six gallon. And it's a little bit different than what you traditionally think of when you're doing big batch frying outdoors. Usually when I fry things outdoors, like a turkey, I have a propane burner and I set a big pot on top of it, fill it with oil and then fry everything. And then usually I have to toss that oil out. You can only use it so many times. The Max Fryers are a little bit different because the 90,000 BTU burner is actually encased in metal and inside the fryer itself. So when you add your oil to it, all of the oil above the burner burns at 350 to 375, which is an ideal temperature for frying, but below the burner is 110 degrees. What's important about that is when you put your fryer baskets in, if things drip out like small French fries and onion rings or breading or anything, all of that's actually gonna fall to the bottom of the fryer down there in that 110 degree zone. When it's in that zone, it's not gonna burn and it's not gonna tarnish the taste of your oil. So everything that's frying on top is at the right temp, but everything that falls at the bottom is an ideal temp for just kind of resting it. Then once you're done frying, you turn the propane tank off, you let your oil cool, and then there's a hose that connects to the back and you can drain out the oil and filter it. And Max Fryer says that you can reuse that oil up to 30 times. If you do that, they said that's an oil savings of $1,400 on their four gallon model and up to $2,000 on their six gallon model. The Max Fryers are available on their website now. I'll put the link in the show notes. They're priced at $370 77 to $446 for just the unit itself. You can also get an optional cart that you can set it on that has wheels and that way you can take it on the go. In the smoker category, Bradley is launching a new smoker called the Raven Smoker. What I like about this is the size and the new features that it has. So the size is much bigger than most of their other models and it's a little bit more square instead of rectangular. It holds up to four racks and the racks are about 18 and a half inches by 17 and a half inches, which means that you can put on whole slabs of ribs, you can do a whole pack of brisket, and again, there's four levels, so you can really load it up with meat if you want to. At the top of the smoker, you'll find all the control settings. Like the other Bradley smokers, this is an electric cabinet smoker, and the way that it gets the smoke is from their hardwood biscuits that load in and then burn and create the smoke inside of the chamber. With the new model, you can adjust the smoke intensity to a higher level, all the way to no smoke at all. Another feature that I really like is that the settings go down to 86 degrees, all the way up to 320. 20 degrees. So at 86 degrees, you can actually cold smoke. And once you're done smoking regular food, if you want to use it as a holding chamber, it will go to 140 degrees. That's one thing I touched on with the GE indoor profile smoker that I saw earlier this year. I loved that it had the holding capacity. Well, now the Raven smoker will as well. The Raven also comes with two meat probes, so you can insert those into your meat, set the temperature using the Bluetooth connected app, and then once your meat reaches temp, the grill will automatically turn off. 
Keep an eye out for the Raven Smoker. It's going to be released in a few months. The last brand I want to touch on today is Meat. If you're ready to dabble into sausage making or jerky making, this is the company for you. I have used my KitchenAid grinder in the past to try to grind meat, and that is not ideal because it takes too long to load your meat through and then the fat start to melt. And if you have melted fat when you're making sausage, it ends up dry and crumbly. So you need something that's got a little bit more juice. Well, Meat offers a few different varieties ranging from 0.5 horsepower power all the way up to two horsepower if you're really trying to do some serious sausage making. They also have a little 500 watt grinder that will crank out four pounds per minute. So it's still ideal if you want to do some small batch sausage making. In addition to their meat grinders, they have other things for meat like meat mixers, five and 15 pound stuffers, jerky gun kits, dehydrators, vacuum sealers, knives, meat saws, you name it. But one of the other things you're definitely going to want to keep an eye out for are their meat slicers. They have two varieties, a seven and a half inch and a 10 inch. I have a pretty cheap meat slicer that I got on Amazon and it works okay, but I'm definitely ready to upgrade. So I've got my eyes on these slicers from meat. If you're interested in making thinly sliced meat for jerky, making homemade bacon, or even making homemade lunch meat, having a meat slicer is a definite must. Honestly, this year when people ask me what I want for Christmas, I'm just gonna send them to the meat website because anything off of there would make me happy. Well, those are my top finds from the 2024 National Hardware Show. I hope you guys are interested in some of those. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all the different products. As always, visit girlscangrill.com for thousands of barbecue tips and hundreds of recipes. And be sure to follow me at Girls Can Grill on all the socials. Until next time, guys, happy grilling.